in today's video, we shall discuss the second part of the chapter atmosphere and cover some topics like greenhouse effect, global warming and ozone depletion. So before we get into further details of understanding what greenhouse effect actually is, we need to understand what the term greenhouse stands for. A greenhouse is actually a glass house, a structure made up of glass walls and glass roof which allows sun's heat inside. The heat is trapped and the heat is not let out into the atmosphere further. So eventually, slowly, because of the heat being trapped inside, the temperature slowly starts increasing and that's a greenhouse. Now what is a greenhouse or a glass house used for? It's used mostly in the colder regions to grow crops which actually grow in the warmer or tropical climatic conditions. Similarly, like a greenhouse or a glass house, the Earth's atmosphere also acts like a giant greenhouse. Now during the daytime we know that we receive the sun's radiation and there are certain gases in the atmosphere, spe specifically carbon dioxide and water vapor. These gases act like a greenhouse. They trap the sun's heat and the excess amount of heat is radiated back into space. Now cut to at night when there is no sunlight, the heat which was captured throughout the day, it slowly readily redistributed into the atmosphere, thereby not making the earth very cold or freezing at night in the absence of the sun. So this heat which was trapped throughout the day, it what makes life possible on earth even at night. So greenhouse effect is a good thing and it has a great positive impact on the atmosphere of the earth. Now, how are humans impacting this greenhouse effect? Human activities have completely destroyed the natural greenhouse effect of the earth by carrying out various activities like faulty agricultural and industrial practices, deforestation, burning of fossil fuels. When these activities are carried out, excess amount of greenhouse gases are added into the atmosphere like CFCs, that is chlorofluorocarbons, nitrous oxide, methane. These gases further trap more amount of heat, thereby increasing the overall air temperature of the earth and that is known as global warming. So all in all, we need greenhouse effect to survive. But when greenhouse effect further leads to global warming, that becomes a negative thing. So when we have global warming happening, these are the chain of effects, catastrophic events that happen on the earth. I've mentioned some here like there can be rise in sea level. As the temperatures are soaring high, in the last few decades, scientists, scientists have actually shown evidences of rise in sea level. Now sea level rises because of the melting of permafrost around the North Pole and the South Pole. Our precious glaciers are melting, permanent ice caps on high mountain tops, they are melting, which adds up to the existing sea water. And that's why simulation models have shown that in another few hundreds of years, all the coastal areas will be underwater. Major metropolitan cities of the world, which are located along the coastal areas, they'll be completely submerged underwater. Then we know some island nations who are already facing the brunt of global warming, like Maldives. Further, there is also loss of biodiversity. Now we know that there's a topic called exotic or endemic species. There are certain organisms which can survive in those particular climatic conditions only. You can't shift them in different parts of the earth. So when there is global warming, these organisms, they cannot quickly readily adapt to sudden climatic changes and they either get completely extinct or many of them now are on the verge of extinction. They're quite vulnerable, like the polar bears, the monarch butterflies, then a very good example of loss of biodiversity would also be the coral reefs. Coral reefs we know are one of the diverse ecosystems on the earth in our world's oceans and the largest coral reef system in the world is the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. And you'll be surprised to know that half of this reef has already been declared dead because of global warming. Then further, there is a change in agricultural pattern also. As weather conditions are slowly but starkingly changing, uh, there is shortage of food grains or food crops in different parts of the earth and eventually in near future, there can be scarcity of food because of global warming again. 
in addition to this there are also possible health risks a very good example of this would be the breeding of mosquitoes now mosquitoes largely survive in warmer hotter climatic conditions and they can hardly survive in colder regions so as the temperatures will start soaring high overall the mosquitoes will also expand their territories and spread diseases like dengue yellow fever chikungunya malaria etc besides these there is also climate change happening on a very large scale and the effect is being felt everywhere there are droughts happening in different parts of the earth the magnitude and intensity of rainfall is slowly changing there is grass appearing shockingly on many slopes of antarctica and recently in the winter that we had many ski resorts in europe didn't receive snowfall at all they had to be shut down these are all effects of climate change and global warming it sounds like a very dramatic national geographic documentary but no climate change is real global warming is real and we have to act very fast moving on further another important issue corresponding to the atmosphere of the earth besides greenhouse effect is ozone depletion okay as we had discussed in a previous video ozone is a very important gas a type of oxygen which is found in the stratosphere which shields us from the harmful uv rays but nowadays this ozone layer is also be is also being depleted and extinguished you will be surprised to know that the thickness of the ozone layer in the atmosphere is only 3 mm that's like holding two coins together and the thickness of those two coins is actually the thickness of ozone layer in the atmosphere but it carries out the most important role of shielding the earth from the harmful uv rays of the sun now how are we contributing in depleting the ozone just like we are added more of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere we are also adding more of ozone depleting substances in the atmosphere namely cfcs or chlorofluorocarbons then hydrocarbons and also nitrogen oxide these are the major contributors in depleting the ozone layer now recently scientists have realized the importance of the ozone and major industrialized nations of the world they have come together and signed an agreement called the montreal protocol in order to completely stop or phase out the use of ozone depleting substances now as students as normal human beings what can we do to prevent the earth from being deteriorated further we can we can carry out small steps but they can make a huge difference like switching off fans and lights when not in use walking for short distances or commuting for short distances instead of being fully dependent on vehicles using alternate sources of energy like solar power wind power tidal power instead of being fully dependent on fossil fuels these are minor steps but can make a colossal difference